everybody, welcome to flipping $400 into a Ferrari and also a dealer auction where today you get to join me and my grandfather at a dealer only auction that you probably don't have access to at all and see what you can buy for $4,500. Now it's tax season, which means it's incredibly busy, which also means when demand is high, supply is low, the price goes up. I'm nervous we're not gonna be able to buy anything. I don't know what we can buy for $4,500 at a dealer auction today. But you guys stick with us. We're gonna show you what we can afford, what we end up with, and any hiccups along the way. My name is Craig. This is my grandfather, Papa Al from Flying Wheels. Let's get going. So Pop, we are a year into this process, and the end goal is to buy a Ferrari that you can drive with just an initial investment of $400. Well, I have a Bentley Continental GT, which I'm going to recap with you today because I have some really cool updates about that. I also have a Toyota Tundra, which you may have seen a video. I'll put a link to it right here if you haven't seen the Toyota Tundra. So I have a 2008 Toyota Tundra, I have a Bentley Continental GT, and today I have $4,500 because I sold a Jeep Grand Cherokee. So what can we buy? I have no idea, we're gonna explore. I'm looking as I'm speaking to see what we can come up with for $4,500. We're also going to go over our numbers. Why do we have $4,500? What did we make off the Grand Cherokee? Did we make any money? How are we doing? So stay tuned to the very end. You get to see what we bought, what the problems were with everything, and where we're at for money. Let's start with this car right here. This is a 2013 Suzuki Grand Vitara. Suzuki isn't even made anymore, but this looks like it should be about a $4,500 car, and it's a project, which is fun. I enjoy doing projects on video. I can bring this thing back to life. It's a four by four. We're in New England, we need four by fours. It has 72,000 miles. So this car, might actually be a winner. Let's check it out. Slow start, does the check engine light go off? Uh, check engine light's on. Has an aftermarket radio. Ooh, sunglasses, cheapies, too bad. And an extra set of tires and wheels. Extra set of tires and wheels. So we'll put it in drive. We'll put it in, oh, can't use that song because of copyright. All right, we have forward, reverse, we have good tires, we have an extra set of tires and wheels, we do have a check engine light. I did not bring my scan tool. We have a little bit of rust, which I can take care of. I don't know, I feel like today is gonna be a tough one because we're in this weird market where everything is overpriced, but this car might do it. All right, Pop, let's see what else there is. This Ram is clean and it's hard to find clean old trucks. Well, we get a little bubbling right here. And this would be like a seller for $4,500 if it's not, eh. Nah, never mind. 99 truck, I don't need that up in New England. There's gonna be way too much rust. You know what I do really well with, and I buy a lot of them, are Nissan Armadas. Because the Toyota Sequoias, crazy money. They're just through the roof astronomical prices. The Nissan Armada, family vehicle, nice cars, and they're significantly less than the Tundras. Bingo, right here. It will absolutely not be $4,500, but this is a 2011 with 149. I'm only looking at it because I like them. I buy them all the time. We have the keyless start. It starts up. Any lights on? Will that airbag light go off? Come on, shut off, shut off, shut off. Yes. All right, we have a DVD player, which is great for the fam, great for the kids. We have our third row. We have our tow package. We have the heated seats. Windows all work. Yes, everything works. We'll check the tires, check the transmission, check the four x four. I'm gonna scan this barcode right here with my laser appraiser app to see what it's worth. We'll check the history. So the mileage is, we'll change the mileage to 149. And then let's see, it's worth about, that's a, this is a platinum. So yep, it is a platinum. So it's worth 14.7. The book value on it at auction is about 8,100. Let's double check. So between like 77 and 81, and then we can scroll down, two owners and an accident. I can view the full report, but I sell these things for 12 to 13,000 all day long. Has great tires, has the chrome wheels. I like this. Nothing to do with the Ferrari flip, but this could be a winner for today for us. Minivans, 
This is a 2016 with 135,000 pop. This used to be in our price range. I bet it's gonna be close to eight grand now. I can't even touch minivans. Tax season, we have single moms with a little bit of money that need reliable transportation for all their kids. Minivans are huge. I just sold the town and country yesterday and I need to replace it but it's hard to find clean minivans because kids just destroy them. If you've been following along, you know right before the Toyota Tundra, I had an Acura TL. The Acura TL sold. Now this could work. I paid like three and change for my 2004 Acura TL with like 130,000 miles. I sold it for seven. That gave me 7,000 to come to the auction and buy the Toyota Tundra for six plus the repairs. So I own the Tundra for $7,000. This could be a winner. This could be in our budget. Let's check the transmission. Yeah, but the radios never work on these things. Let's see if the radio works. Oh good, radio works too. So I'm gonna walk around, check tires and everything, go through it. This could be a winner. These, I love these cars. These 750Is are, incredibly luxurious, incredibly comfortable, incredibly unreliable. So you can actually buy them at a fair price because they're so unreliable. I mean, look at how nice this car is. There's DVDs on the back seat for the passengers. Look, it has soft suede pillows for the headrests. And check that out right there. These cars are so amazing. And that's why I love my Audi A8L. It's a very similar car to this one. Massaging rear seats, reclining rear seats. It's like a chauffeur's dream car and it has 500 horsepower. That's my Audi, not this one, but I love these cars. Pop, you can have any car, any car. What would your dream car be? I have my dream car. 56 Thunderbird convertible. Hey, check this out. Speaking of that, everything's melting. That T-Bird can come out of the garage soon. Pretty soon. If you don't know the T-Bird, you gotta check out that video, how we got the T-Bird and learn all about it. It's a really cool car. Check this out. I already have one. I don't need a second one, but those are three LT wheels. Like those are the upgraded wheels. I love that blue interior. Those are the upgraded three LT seats too. Nice car, but we already have one pop. And we actually learned how to race it in Las Vegas two weeks ago with my father other video you can go check that one out you learned how to race corvettes in las vegas thanks to gm super cool video great experience with my dad all right for the newbies to our channel let's explain how the auction works you and i get to come here we hang out we walk through and get to kind of check out all the cars you can't really drive them but you can check the 4x4 drive reverse make sure everything's good if i brought my scan tool i could check the uh emissions and obds and and see if there's any codes in the computer green light means it's guaranteed till five o'clock today. Engine, transmission, or any repairs over $500. Yellow light means there's some type of announcement you wanna listen for it. Red light, it's as is, it's too bad. You, you, you get what you get and you don't get upset, it's your car. Also, anything over 10 years, which would be 2013 because they go by manufacturer date, or over 100,000 miles, sold. Red light, as is, too bad. Doesn't even matter, it has under 100,000 miles. So. Most of the stuff we buy is red light because we buy like 100,000 mile cars. Check this car out. I like that truck. Wow. That is sharp. Wow, oh, this is nice. These things are worth so much money now. They didn't used to be. You could, like, this could be an affordable toy a few years ago. Now they're upwards of $30,000, and I bet this thing will sell for $30,000. This is great. What a cool looking truck. I bet it rides like hell. While we're right in the beginning of this video, let's discuss something. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to subscribe down below because we do videos like this all the time and I try to be as entertaining as possible, educational, informative. If there's things you like, comment down below and tell me what you liked. If there's things you didn't like that you think I did wrong, which people have no problem telling me about, comment that down below too because I do read your comments. Try to be tactful though. You know, some people are pretty mean. Also, if at any point you find that this video is helpful, do me a favor, give me a thumbs up because it helps boost the algorithm for us. So it's a favor to us. Let's keep searching. You can see there are cars as far as the eye can see. There's probably over a thousand cars here today, but there's also a thousand dealers here that are buying multiple cars. So we'll come all day, we'll shop all day and we'll leave empty hand. I haven't really found anything else worth $4,500. Everything I've found is gonna be more money. Even that Civic with the exhaust hanging down is gonna be more than $4,500. I don't want an old Saturn. Kia Forte, maybe. But where's the fun in that? I mean, we're doing a Ferrari flip series. We want it to be fun and interesting. Jeep Wranglers, I love them, but they're gonna be too much money. Whoa, look what Papa Al found. I have never owned an Aston Martin. 
what is that a db9 look at this thing i definitely don't need a dustin martin but i am a glutton for punishment i can't resist we check out this car no key now one of two things are possible the key probably gets taken because they don't want everybody in and out of this car starting it stopping it or they're trying to hide something so this car is red light meaning as is too bad for me whatever i pay for it it's mine i own it for let's check out under the hood six liter v12 if you don't take risks you're not gonna win but also if you take risks you can lose which happens to me as well i'm interested but it is a gamble i know nothing about this car the auction starting let's go inside we'll see what we end up with I i'm nervous i don't know that i'm going to be able to find anything in this price range besides clunkers and i don't want to be selling clunkers for forty five hundred dollars before we go into the auction let's flash back over to my shop i'm going to go through all the numbers tell you where we're at with the bentley what we made on the jeep and a recap on the tundra not a big recap i know you guys don't like those but we'll see where we're at right now and then we're hopping inside the auction to see what we end up with all right so we're at my shop right now and i want to show you something this toyota tundra we paid six thousand dollars for it we have roughly $990 or so into it. It was a disaster when we bought it. You can see we replaced the bumper. I forgot to buy that cap. I put tires on it. We detailed it. This thing came out really, really nice. If you saw how it was when we originally bought it, see this Honda Civic right here? It did not look like this when we originally bought it. This is an 08 Honda Civic that was an absolute train wreck when we first bought this thing for $1,000. I now have it listed for $4,500 on my website because it is really, really nice. So in an upcoming video, I'm gonna teach you what we did, the entire process, and how we maximized our profits and made it safe and reliable for someone else. If you've been following along with my CA Corvette, you know I want to set up black wheels. Well, Carlos Morales from MMR Wheels made these for me, custom made them. Check it out. My car is all tucked away for the winter, but he made me these wheels to put on my Corvette stock size so I get to put the stock tires on these wheels and have black wheels. Now my Corvette's been tucked away all winter. I wanna show you one more thing and then we're going back to the auction. All right, surprise, it's giveaway time. I'm gonna start giving away things to all of my viewers. Well, not all of my viewers, but some of you guys. So from time to time, we have sponsors that sponsor this video. Today's video, Hulkman battery tenders. Super excited about these because it's a product I actually use and I'm gonna give it to you guys. It actually plugs into your battery tender. As you can see, I have my Viper plugged into a battery tender. I have my motorcycles plugged into a battery tender, my Corvette, and I'm gonna give this away to one of you guys. All I want you to do is click the subscribe button, the thumbs up, and comment down below Hulkman, and I'm gonna choose a random subscriber to mail this to. It's yours for free. As a matter of fact, I have one tending to my Viper right now. Let's see, we're at, let's see, we're at 14.2 volts. Oh my goodness, I love this car so much. Be careful, this garage is packed so tight. All right, clutch in, key in. Oh yeah, keep on baby, there we go. Thank you, Hulk man. I love this car. This battery tender is compatible with most batteries, including six volt and 12 volt. It can charge the battery for cars, motorcycles, lawnmowers, ATVs, trucks, SUVs, boats, whatever. It also does battery diagnostics, so it's really a cool feature. And as you can see, with everything I have here, it's really, really useful. I mean, if I had one, two, three, four, five, plus all those batteries, I would use them all. Thank you, Hulkman, for today's integration. I'm giving this one away to somebody that likes, subscribes, and comments Hulkman down below. But if you want it yourself, you can find it in the direct link right down below. So make sure you get one, two, three, four, five of these. However many batteries you have, Hulkman can take care of you. Thank you, Hulkman. Let's go back to the auction. 2007 Scion TC, 90,000 miles, automatic. That's basically a Toyota Corolla, super reliable. It's 15 years old. I would pay two grand normally, maybe 23 plus auction fees in a regular market. That car could actually really be a good $4,500, like I'd probably sell it for five grand. It's sold here at auction for 4,500 plus fees. So I can't even compete when people are paying what I would sell it for, they're paying that price at auction. I'd hate to say, but this is probably my price range, 2008 with 253,000 miles. I don't wanna be selling that stuff though. I just sold one of these yesterday for $7,000. It was a 2013 with 125,000 miles and it was a standard. These are turbos, they're fun and they sell pretty easily. I got seven grand for it. I paid four for it. So this could be a good one for us. The problem is it's a used car dealer that has it. I just found out, so I'm not even gonna bid on it. 
because why is it here? Why wouldn't a used car dealer be selling it? Oh man, that is ugly. In reality, that's a junk van. That should go to the junk man and pay $400. They just got $1,000 for a bus auction fee, so like $1,250. Somebody just paid for that. And I don't even know who they're gonna sell that to. Jaguar is tempting. I've always liked these. They're on a Ford Taurus platform, but they're all-wheel drive. 20, three grand. It was owned by an old guy. He's the dealer. He says it was his wife's car. Who knows if you can believe him, but those things are super unreliable, and now it's an old car. Hey! The Dodge Dart is $2,700, which is really tempting. I don't know the history, but at that price, that's pretty fair. I just have to hope it's decent. It's probably not. Yeah. I have like a thousand dollars. I have like a thousand dollars to put into this car. I'm going against my gut. I feel like it's just bad. That's it. Yeah. I'm done here. Go with your gut. That car is going to be a headache. I think. Thirty-five hundred plus fees. That would have been in my budget, but I just don't know that car well enough. All right. I'm really feeling this thing, even though it has one hundred ninety thousand miles. I've always wanted these and they hold their value tremendously. Fortunately, I just scanned the barcode and even with 190,000 miles, this car's still worth $12,650. So even if I stole it at like 10, five, where we'd be way over our budget, so we can't really afford it. You can even check the history to find out. Two owners, no accidents, but out of our budget. Here's how accurate that app is. It's at $12,000 on the dot right now. Don't 12,400. And we'll see you later. Even crashed cars are getting all the money. Like this Ford Fusion coming up behind me is a 2010. It's all banged up on this side. Rockers are rotted and it's banged up on the other side as well. It's still got 2,800 plus auction fees, which means it's gonna be well over three grand. It's just not worth it. It's not worth that price in his condition. And, and now those are all things I can do, but that should be like a 17 or an $1,800 car in a normal market. I just can't pay double that. I might have got my car and it's right there, a 13 Suzuki Grand Vitara and it is filthy, but it's a good project. It'll make a good video. I got it on an M, so we'll see. I got the Aston Martin. And I'm terrified about it. I don't even know what to expect. All right, and ready for the reveal of our next Ferrari flip is going to be this right here. The Suzuki Grand Vitara, that is a hell of a project car. I don't know what I'm getting myself into with this one. I was getting nervous. I didn't think I was gonna come up with anything today. I thought I was gonna have a big goose egg and I didn't wanna buy junk, but I might have ended up with some junk. I don't even know. We'll see if it starts. We'll see if it drives. Let's see what I paid for it first. Suzuki, I paid $4,040 with the auction fees. So I'm under budget. I have about $500 to put into this car and repairs to get to my budget because we have $4,500. So I left a little bit of a buffer there. You always should. You don't want to blow your load. Wait a minute. I can't say that. You don't want to spend all your money and then have nothing to invest in the car because obviously this car is going to need some work. We're going to have to inspect it. We're going to have to go through it. I can hear my grandfather revving the engine behind us. <laughs> All right, and our third and final car for the day is, brrr, drum roll please, the Nissan Armada Platinum. I did buy it and I paid a little more than I would have liked to, but it was really, really clean. I sell a ton of these. It's a busy season. I need inventory. We have open spots all over the parking lot. And this thing is super sharp. So this is our third one for the day. Let's head back to the shop with all of our inventory. This is our latest project. This is our next video right here. Look at the set of tires in here. Tread depth, like brand new. Those are the original wheels, the original floor mats. This is a big one, look at this. The original wheels. So these ugly wheels that I thought we were gonna have to paint and redo were just winter tires. These are the original wheels. That alone is gonna make this thing worth more money. Now here's the crazy thing. I've been talking about it all day. This car, I should have paid two grand twenty five hundred dollars at the most for it in a normal economy in a normal time but now with inflation and fuel prices and shortages of vehicles and everything i literally paid double what i would normally pay for this car it's insane and that's the world we're living in right now early the next morning hey just wanted to give you a little show of what it's like owning an independent used car dealership you see that nissan armada on the trailer well look at this last night I had my truck with a snowplow on, with a giant trailer, with a giant truck, 
Wendy's is short staffed, so the inside is closed. So the drive through line is insanely long last night. I had my kids in the car whining and complaining because they were hungry. I took a turn, tried to bypass the line of cars, and look at the freaking super sharp, jagged edged rock that they put on their curb. I went over it, that stick wasn't there, I just put it there. And this happened, a freaking blowout. I had to leave the trailer and truck in the Wendy's parking lot overnight. I called the Wendy's manager, I called the police department of the town and let them know that I had to leave this here. Luckily, I always come prepared. I had a spare, I had a jack, I had a four-way lug wrench, but I just didn't have time. I had to pick my daughter up from piano lessons. So I had to leave this thing here and hope it was still here in the morning. Fortunately, I had a blowout. I don't know who's towing a car on a trailer with a blown out wheel. So I wasn't too terrified of it getting stolen, just maybe broken into or robbed. Just a little insight into the world of owning a small car dealership. And just like that, 10 minutes later, bing, bang, boom, spare is on. We are on the go again. And now we're gonna go over our final numbers. So I went to the Virginia Auto Auction with $36,000 back in November. I bought the Bentley. I did a windshield, I shipped it, I did some suspension work, all said and done after the auction fees and everything. I own that Bentley for $28,730, which is pretty cool considering I own a Bentley for less than the cost of like a Camry. And I actually really, really like that car. Now, if you subtract the 36,000 I started with, minus the cost of the Bentley, I had $7,270 left in cash. In December, I went to the auction, I bought a Jeep Grand Cherokee and an Acura TL. After doing all the repairs on the Jeep Grand Cherokee, I owned it for $1,876, and after doing all the repairs on the Acura, I owned it for $4,192. Now, if you take the $7,270 balance from the Bentley, and then subtract the Acura and the Grand Cherokee costs, I now had a cash surplus of $1,202. I sold the Acura for $7,900, which was a gross profit of $3,708. I then sold the Grand Cherokee for $4,500, which was a gross profit of $2,624. So I'm making some money. That gives me a cash balance of $13,602 plus a Bentley Continental GT. I then went to the auction a few weeks ago and I bought a 2008 Toyota Tundra. We did brakes and suspension and exhaust. I own that Tundra for $6,994. I have it for sale for $11,000. If you take the cash balance, $13,602, and subtract the entire cost of the Tundra, including all repairs, I now have $6,608 today to go to the auction with. I bought the Suzuki Grand Vitara, so now I have a Suzuki, a Toyota Tundra, and a Bentley, and I have about $2,200 in cash left over. So in the next video, we're gonna try to bring this thing back to life, and we're also gonna check out the Aston Martin to see what kind of quirky things we find with it. I don't know what to expect with this car, and then we can sell that thing and the Tundra, and I gotta get rid of this Bentley. Also, there's a couple other things that I've done with the Bentley. I'm starting to really, really enjoy it. The next coming video is, can you daily drive a Bentley Continental GT? I drove it for two weeks straight. I didn't take my truck. I didn't do anything. I went grocery shopping. I went to the dump in it. I want to see if it's realistic. That is a video coming out very, very soon. And then after that, I think I'm going to list it on cars and bids. I really haven't even tried to list that thing for sale. I've just been enjoying it all winter long. Now it's ready to go. Now I have an Aston Martin. I'm ready to sell that Bentley. How cool is it? to say I have a Bentley and an Aston Martin. I mean, I'm not saying that to gloat. I'm saying because if I could tell myself even five years ago or 10 years ago or tell my childhood self the cars that I have now, I, I wouldn't believe it. That's It's just such like a blessing that, I don't know, everyone's healthy and there's food on the plate. That's the blessing. But to have like really cool toys because of my business is also really, really neat. It's something that I dreamt of my whole life and it's actually happening. With that in mind, I've created a program that teaches you how to do the exact same thing called startyourdealership.com. If you ever wanted to learn how to start your own dealership, get your dealer's license, how the auction really works, how financing works, how lines of credit works and floor plans, I mean everything, down to, the, down to every single little detail, startyourdealership.com is right down below. Also, Car Flipping 101, maybe you don't want a dealer's license and have all this stuff that I have, like have all this overhead that I have. Maybe you just wanna flip cars on the side and do it legally. Car Flipping 101. Check them both out. They're both really, really cool. They're both intricate with links down below. The point of these videos is to be educational, interesting, and entertaining. So I hope you guys like this. If it was, do me a favor by hitting the button down below. It's a thumbs up. That will help me make better videos for you guys. If you haven't subscribed yet, 
Guys, subscribe down below. I'll see you all later. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Adios. Guess what? I got the Aston Martin. Yeah, seems redundant. Whoa. Whoa. Pop, let's hear it. drive a uh, Aston Martin. I've never been in one before. This guy's crazy. Hey everyone, thanks again for watching. If you click that circle right in the center, you can subscribe to our channel. Boxes to the left and to the right are for best recommended videos for you, including the Ferrari Flip playlist if you want to catch up on all of the Ferrari videos. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.